got a very intriguing painting here and a very accomplished one by A.B. Koshy. A.B., you've taken on a very difficult subject. You've taken on a big figure in a setting, which is where I tend to paint in my career. But you've done an excellent job. The boat is perfectly poised in there. It's in a, in a very solid location. The, tr the trees around there have formed a reverse archway, which is a, a, a very sensual um, composition to explore. Um, the pole of the guy is perfectly cutting in through there, so the composition and dynamics in there are very smart and clever. Um, what I would do here, however, given all those points of praise, I think the distant trees, you need to include, remember what aerial perspective tells us, that as we recede away from the viewer, the, the, uh, the, the colour dilutes and blues take over and mauves take over in the shadow areas. So you need to incorporate those when you're looking at it in the distance. Work those colours into those shapes. Um, another thing you could do, I think the, the energy you've got in your composition should be reinforced by a bit more energy in the way you're, you're not using light. You could use light a lot more in there. You've got all the aspects of a great painting there. But what about that little shuffle of water where the pole intersects with the water? What about the shuffle of water around the boat? What about the boat, the ripple lines that, that, that follow a boat as it's moving through the water? Those things add, add to the storyline and they add reality to a painting. You could also put, uh, you've got a house there, you've got a boat going towards the house. Would there not be maybe another boat over there? Would there not be something that would add a bit more colour over in that right-hand corner there? A boat near that house that's it's popping out from the trees. So there's other things you could put in there that would push the storyline a bit further and other things such as that, those darts of light to energise the painting a bit more. But well done, Aby. You keep on painting and look forward to seeing the next one you're going to do got a, a painting here by a fellow Aussie, Henry Young. Now listen here, Henry, I'm very disappointed in you because you've done an excellent painting, yet you haven't finished it. And I'm really gonna challenge you to think, what could you put in that painting that would add that dynamic quality of movement and would tell us that this is gum tree territory and this is Australian bushland. So while I'm going to go through the next part, you think about that. Now, what you've done is a very accomplished piece of work here. You've been able to tie the whole painting together from top to bottom with that mauve. Now, very few people know that you must unify a painting by using, by repeating and echoing colours here and there and everywhere across the entire area of the canvas. You've done a job, you've done a top job there Henry. The, the sky colour is soft, you're emphasising the tree at the front and you're saying this is a painting about that, this is a painting about the eucalyptus trunk and about, about eucalyptus trees in general. The back trees in the middle distance are perfect. You've got the umbrella shape there of the, of the, of the clumps, you've got the, 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 the strong vertical thrust of those, of those uh, trunks, you've got that, the yellow in there, we know that the, that the, the eucalyptus tree is a blend of, of warm and cool greys, and you've got all that in there. Um, you've got that beautiful red, deep red and deep, deep darks in the, at the base of the trunk. All very good and, and signs of an excellent artist at work. But, return to the question, what could you put in there, Henry? Well, the one colour, think about things that, that live in that sort of environment, and then think about something that's got a colour that you don't have in there, or that you almost have, particularly in that front tree where that gnarled um, uh, stump is. I would put in there a flight of galahs. Think of the colour of galahs, pink, and grey. And the pink would energise that scene extremely well. In the, and you've got a highlight on the right hand side, so the pink would be going to a light pink. Uh, under the wing would be the, 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 the mauve and the grey. And the front of the galah has got that nice little beak, right, and a, and a, and a, um, a grey head. So 
I would put, see three galahs soaring between those trees, one in front and another two to the left-hand side, going helter-skelter because they've been frightened. Right? But all of a sudden, you've gone from a, from a, a static um, observational painting to something which is a storyline and one which has got movement and excitement to it. So, Henry, an extremely good painting, but finish it off, mate. I've got a pretty accomplished painting here from George Colson, George Thomas Colson to be exact. George, look, you're a very, very good artist, I've got to say that, and your understanding of art is very complete. Um, I would say that you've been painting for many, many years, um, and it shows up in the way you've shaped this seascape, this, this land mass that intersects with the ocean. The whole thing here, all the elements, George, you've done are pretty much complete and pretty much spot on. Uh, the sea colours right, the headlands juxtaposing and, and, and inter interlocking each, uh, with each other gives us an S shape throughout there, which is a nice shape to have in a painting. Uh, the, the, the rocks on the left hand side that are jutting down into the water, into that thin water, they're perfect, nice darks and lights there. It shows a formation within the geology of the area. Um, the, 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 the use of a shadow in the foreground there is a, it pushes the eye into the water. So you're, and, and the, on the right hand side of course you've got that large mass of, of, of red rock there which pushes the eye back over into the middle of the painting again. So your use of compositional elements is excellent. Your use of colour, your, your, your sense of colour and, your, uh, and the way you've composed it is good. Um, so it's a very complete painting, George. What would I do with it? Now uh, here we go. Well, all that being said, I think you could use highlights better and more. Um, you tend to be fairly measured in how far you'll push them. Go a little bit further. Go a little bit further. Don't be afraid to find one of those waves down there in that little cove and push it harder. Don't be afraid to, to find that, those, ro those waves crashing against the distant rocks. Don't be afraid to find one that's really pushing around much harder and finding a bit more of a splash. Don't be afraid to use that, the, the green on those headlands there, find a little area that's getting a bit more light to it or a little bit more shadow to it. So you can create more of a dynamic feel in those areas by simply using your contrast elements better. Um, something you could put in there to energise it, which you'd find in any coastal area would of course be birds. And birds tend to go together, looking for cert searching out for, for scraps of food and so on, where fish bodies are going, um, and, run, uh, and a run of fish. So there's no reason why in there you couldn't put a couple of birds swooping in from the right hand side, one nice big one, and then finding three or four soaring up towards the horizon area. Um, you could put a twinkle of them coming from the right hand side over that headland, breaking up that green mass. There's a lot of things you can do with birds and people really don't explore that very much. Um, but don't be afraid, look at them and see what they do. Analyse the behaviour of birds around the coastline and you'll see that there are certain patterns that they, or certain behavioural patterns that they follow. Uh, it's generally to do where, with where, where mankind is, where a boat's been, where a bucket's been left, where there's a jetty um, or where there's been a picnic. There's many things that can cause birds to be there but the chances are they are there somewhere, so put them in. But a very, very accomplished painting, George, and congratulations. Got a, I've got a painting here that's just brimming with excitement and individuality. It's by Ralph Smith. Ralph, you're very much a character in your own right, I know that, because generally a painting reflects the nature of the person who's willing the brush. Um, and you say to me, Bob, I see the sky in a fairly different way. To me, it's an area which has got its own way of behaving. And I see it in that way. And so you've exercised that option and given a lot of strength and character to the sky. Those pushes of light and dark, where you've formed the clouds to be what you want them to be, is an excellent exercise in individuality and, being in, and in singularity. So well done there. Then you retreat it down to the norms, the traditional way of doing water, and you've found wave shapes, and you've found a headland, and then you've come down into the foreground. And you've thrown in a random bird there, so congratulations on the development of a storyline. 
So all that's pretty good, Ralph. What would I do to it? Well, I think you've done a pretty good job in in um, being um, in, in in approaching a traditional subject in a very unique way. Um, you've got warmth in there at the horizon, and you've got it in about one quarter of the painting, and it only occurs there. Now, in any painting, we should unify. We should have elements that unify a painting from one corner to another. I'd like to see that warmth come down through the waves into the foreground. In that way, you're going to unify the top of the bottom. Um, and I think that you could put more birds in there to show, to break up the sky a bit more. Because as it is at the moment, the sky is dominating the message point. And you need, and you're tantalising with the elements of traditional painting. But uh, I think you take that a bit further and, and unify those elements better. Put some more birds in the sky to say that, OK, I appreciate the fact that I'm strong and individual, but I also appreciate the fact, which you do, of course, that, that there are traditional elements that we're going to put into a painting. So you can take those birds through the painting more up into the sky. And that would give us more of a message given painting. But a pretty unique piece of work and well done. I've got a very different painting here from Tony Gein and Hertzler. And Tony wants to know how to energise chrome in a very still life painting of a Harley Davidson. Now Tony, I like bikes, I always have. Um, and I, I'm impressed by the artwork of, 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 of still life artists who concentrate on super realism because they're able to really push these these elements that you're searching for. Um, look, light comes in many different ways. Light, and you're talking about how to add sparkle, how do you add a, a light to a chrome? And chrome, of course, is, is only a reflective surface that takes on things around it. So if there's reds and blues around a chrome area, that chrome inherits those two colours. And where the light occurs will be will depend on where the light source is coming from when it impacts on that chrome. Um, the greatest impact would be, of course, where the blue and the yellow came together. If the light hit just a red area, it would be, of course, a strong impulse, a strong hit of light. But the actual impact of a light would be far greater at the point where two colours juxtapose. So, given that, Let's say you've got a chrome area. What I would do to, to really propel the, the power of a, light, of a light bounce off a chrome area would be to find something put near that chrome area that would cut lines across it, either lines or colours, so that you then propel your light source into, that, into a pattern of, of shapes or a juxtaposition of colour. In that way, you're your light source is going to have much more energy and much more power than simply coming from a bland, uh, uninterrupted plane surface that's one colour or without any shapes that are penetrating it and going across that surface. And oftentimes you'll see in the super realist paintings uh, the use of that, of that element of where they're, they're putting things beside it that will give patterns across that chrome and then they'll put a light source over here to bounce that light where, that's going to, where that uh, energy of, of shapes is taking place or the colours taking place. So um, in this painting here, if it's taken from a photograph, then you need to be inventive. But what I suggest you do is go and get a bike and fiddle around with things near the bike to get those lines and shapes across the, cr the, the, the chrome tank or the, 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 the suspension gear or the pipes or whatever it may be and then go for that because how good you paint really depends on how well you manage shapes and colour with light. So a lot to do in there but you're doing a pretty good job. You keep doing it. I want to see it return to finish too. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of What Bob Thinks. Be sure to submit your artwork via my Facebook page and stay tuned with All Things Art.